So welcome back, everybody. Today we're doing the very last chapter in this book, which is chapter 13, Adjustments in Year End Procedures. So this is pretty much this is pretty much just like in accounting. We reach the end of um, we reach the end of the class. So the very last thing that we need to learn is how to properly close out our books. And that is what chapter 13 is about. So we're going to be looking at a couple things. So we're going to be looking at how to use a general journal. So again, I may have told you that when we're going into QuickBooks, forget all you know about accounting, right? Mm -hmm. This is where you're reintroduced back to the general journal, okay? Um, this is also where uh, we're going to be looking at how to add in. So what's the purpose of a general journal? And we'll talk about that in a second. We're going to be learning how to edit, void, and delete transactions. We're going to learn how to memorize transactions. And lastly, we're going to look at closing process, which is closing up just the end of the year stuff. Okay, so pretty straightforward, pretty easy read. Um, there's nothing too intense to really, truly know about chapter 13. It's just how to just wrap things up. So in this case, we're going to go back again and introduce us ourselves to the lovely general journal. So again, from, uh, from a, I guess a couple lectures ago, I'm not quite sure specifically which one. Um, I know that chapter six, we weren't able to look at the general ledger. We got to look at the trial balance. And now this time we get to look at the general journal. So everything that we did actually learn in accounting, you see the smaller piece, you see the pieces kind of come together. Okay. So the reason why we have journal entries is right here. I want you to focus on this page right here because these are the reasons why we're going to be using our general journal, okay? If we need to transfer from things from either class to class or we need to transfer from account to account, we need to make our non-cash transactions or for expenses. So a, um, an example would be depreciation, right? You're not really transferring real money. You're just expensing it. So that's considered a non-cash um, transaction. Okay. Um, other things that we're going to be using is also when we actually close out um, our business, we need to remember that when a part of the closing process is closing everything it is into equity. Okay, and that is what you would typically use the general journal for. So that's pretty much it. I mean, as far as that, there's not much left to it. So let's go ahead and dive into the first um, section here. So it is going to be creating a general journal. So um, we're going to be entering a journal um, and we're going to be um, transferring from one account to another. Now, before we even get started, right, the first thing that we got to make sure is we need a place to, to actually put our general journals. So if I go ahead and press uh, my chart of accounts, notice that my, general, my journal entries is going to be here and it's part of banking. Okay, so it is located here because essentially it's not a bank account, but essentially what you're doing is you're using this account to keep track of all the journal entries that you make. So if I were to double click it right now, I have a few made, but I, I didn't make it myself. These were pre pre already made. Uh, but these, this is where you, you actually keep track of all of the journal entries that you make. So this is where all your adjustments are recorded, right? And the reason why it's considered a bank is because it's kind of like a temporary placeholder for it, right? Yeah. It's a place to kind of, for you to keep record, but also for you to kind of transfer the money from one account to another, okay? And yes, that's number one thing that you need to have in order to complete the closing process. You need to have a account 
It doesn't matter what it is. It could be adjustment entries, whatever it is. As long as you have this account, you can go ahead and proceed with the rest of your um, adjustment entries or things that you need. Maybe you accidentally um, categorize something in some area that you want to change. Or maybe you forgot to put a location for one of them. I don't know. It, it's one of those. It's one of those six items that you can choose to complete a general journal for. So in this case, there's only one place and one place only. All right, it's going to be your your um, company on the menu bar, and it's going to be make general journal. Okay, only one place and one place only. Easy. Once I get here, right, um, it's going to give you a message. You're going to say, okay. All right. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have our correct dates. In this case, I believe they ask us to do it um, the January, January 31st of 2019. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. January 1st, oop, that's 2020, keep going, one more year. Okay, January 31st of 2019. Now the second thing you wanna make sure is what number is this? So in this case, um, it should be 2019-1, okay? And you, okay, so there you go. This is my journal entry for uh, as of 2019, okay? The first thing I'm going to recognize is going to be my account for the journal entries, right? This is where I'm going to save all my entries to, all right? And I believe in this case, we have two accounts, two expense accounts, right? We have a rent expense and we have a utilities expense. So what typically happens is, um, maybe for this instance, um, since my rent is a, what do you call it, is a consistent number, like it never changes, right? It's, it's, it's not, there's no, it's, it's not a variable. It doesn't fluctuate, right? It's a, it's one number and one number only. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I, um, the, in this, in this example, I accidentally placed my rent expense with my utilities bill. So this is where I'm taking this example right here and I'm like, oh crap, I actually need to take out of my rent expense and place it into my utilities expense. So in this case, I am recognizing that I'm gonna debit my utilities expense and I'm gonna credit it out of my rent expense because I paid too much into rent expense, all right? And I'm doing it for $25.62, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I have utilities, utilities. Oh, I spelled utilities wrong. Utilities, okay? And I have rent expense, okay? And um, it's... And then here, it's pretty straightforward. You got your debits and your credits right here and your memo. So here, my debit is going to be for $25.62. And then my credit is for $25.62. My memo here is going to be recategorize expense. All right. And it's going to be the same thing. Recat. Categorize, oopsies, categorize expenses. And then this is also going to be the same thing. We categorize expenses. All right. Now, Here's one trick here and one trick that you definitely need to know. Here, my debits and my credits match, right? And I'm gonna show you this now so then when you go into the future, you'll understand that 
this is a preventative measure that QuickBooks has indicated for you since we are typing in numbers, right? Now, what if I accidentally put in 25, 25, 92? If I do that, it's going to automatically calculate that I have 30 cents left and I need to place it somewhere. So in this case, it will not let you record a transaction if your debits and your credits do not match. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's number one. And it's also one of those rules that we've learned in accounting, right? Every time we journal, the, the number one thing that we need to look for is debits equal credits. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it will not allow me to enter in the transaction. It will calculate for me automatically saying, hey, I need to put 30 cents somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to 2562 again. And I'm going to clear out this um, 30 cents. Okay. So in this case, it's 2562. And this is zero. Okay. So now I have them even. There's no discrepancy. There's no latching on to any other account. So in this case, um, I've completed my transfer and I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close. All right, and you should get that beep of approval, right? And if I were to go, to go into my journal entries, it, here it is, my first one right here. And if I double click it, I get to see what it was. Okay. So that is how you have a journal entry for recategorizing for those accounts. Now we will see another example um, um, when we go ahead and deal with uh, closing out our books, but that's just the general, just this is just a general example. Do you guys have any questions in regards to just this general journal in itself? It's pretty straightforward. For it's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, that is one way you can do it, right? Adjusting expenses. Okay. Accounts associated with items. So, here is the second one that I want to show you that you can do. But this time, instead of doing your accounts, you can actually associate them with items. Okay, this is called the zero dollar check. All right, so for example, so it says do not do, but I'm gonna show you because I wanna show you so you understand how to do it, okay? So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and write a check. So that's the number one thing is, okay, we're doing a transfer, okay? So in this case, um, my book says that I originally wanted to, um, have Wong and Sun, right? My original thing that I wanted to do for them was I wanted them to do some photography, right? So I had them for want for three, I believe three sessions for, um, $95. Okay. But in this case, I'm going to cheat. I'm sorry, not three sessions. We only borrowed them. We only borrowed one photographer for $95. So in this case, we're going to do a $0 transaction. Okay. So um, let me close out all of these. And I'm going to go to my write a check window. And here I am. And in this case, we are not going to write it. We're not going to write a physical check because we're going to actually toggle this and go straight into a journal entry. Now it's gonna say this window, you're gonna say don't mention this again. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna make sure that the date's all correct. So for the first, okay, so check number. I believe there is no check number because this is a journal entry. Um, so this one says 2019-2. So it's exactly what our journal entry has, uh, we wrote it for 2019-1. Now, my journal entry for this one is going to be 2019 number two. Now, it still says zero amount because I haven't even typed in what I originally wanted. So first, I want to um, get my uh, vendor, who is Mr. Wong, okay? And 
it says here that we're supposed to have um, a subcontractor expense, but we're just going to ignore that and go straight into items. Okay, so this is what we originally bought him for. We originally originally bought him bought them uh just for a photographer, right? And um okay, so we have the item as the photographer, okay, and we only wanted one one of them. And hold on, the cost is supposed to be Ninety-five dollars. Hold on. What is going on? We only have one photographer. Okay. Okay. I'm still in items. Okay. So here are my items. Okay. I wanted one photographer. Oh, that says photo paper. That's why photographer there you go okay and we only want one whoa it says for 75 dollars i guess we are cheap on them today so since they said one photographer is only 75 dollars why is it they say 95 dollars in, in the book yeah. weird anyways so make sure we're under items so it says 75 dollars. so i'm just gonna I'm just going to go with the flow and I'm going to actually say I don't want the photography session anymore. Instead, I want to order retouching, okay, for the photo retouching um, uh, uh, package, right? And um, so instead of, instead of, oh, I'm sorry, instead of the but instead of the retouching, I want to actually get a photographer instead. So see, now it says it's 95. So I don't know why this is 75. It's supposed to be 95. All right, I'm just going to change that since we can change that. All right, and then, okay. And then here, instead of having it as a positive number, we're going to have it as a negative number because we're ultimately, basically, we're refunding the retouching package and instead we're purchase, we're going to get, um, we're going to get a photographer instead. So in this case, my balance is zero and hence the word zero dollar check. Now, by me doing this, I'm basically refunding or taking back things, something, but I'm transferring the actual sale so instead of retouching i got you a photographer and this is how you properly adjust it and it's going to be for zero zero okay save and close all right and if i were to go back to my chart of accounts and i go into my journal entry again it's going to be right here um general ledger uh yeah for for number two right here. I wrote a check. If I click it for Wong and Son, here it is, my zero dollar check. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you're just wiping it out. I mean, you're Pretty much, yes. I'm transferring, I'm trans, basically I'm transferring a sale. Okay, so instead of getting the retouching package, mm -hmm. I'm gonna actually pay him for a photography session, for just a photographer. All right, and that's what this is. This is doing it based on items. Okay, so we're transferring from one item mm -hmm. to another. To Correct, another. right? And then in the, our first example, right, we transferred from one account to another. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in um, journal entry number one, we transferred from the... The, ex the rent expense account into the utilities expense account. Mm. All right. So, yeah. And that's what you normally would use this for. And it's true, right? When you have an adjustment, right? When we have to adjust for inventory. Say, well, that's a, that's a different entry. But you can apply it to here as well if you want to fix it that way. But they have its own little setting over there under the inventory adjustment section. This one's more for like, okay, I bought supplies. How do I expense my supplies? Boom. 
I have, I bought a fixed asset. How do I depreciate it? Right here. You would use the adjustment entry and you'd place it into the general journal. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it for there. All right. Any questions in regards to just writing general journals for the sake of adjustments? Yeah, like I said, this is a pretty easy read. Okay. All right, now we're going to be looking at editing, voiding, and deleting transactions. What is the number one rule when it comes to QuickBooks? when you're dealing with transactions. Can you delete transactions? <laughs> Let me get there. No. No, you can never delete a transaction, especially if you are a public traded company, okay? Even if you're even a small private company, it is number one rule to never, ever, ever delete anything, whether it's an account, whether it's a check that you've written, whether it's a transaction you've created, you never, ever, ever want to delete. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have the option to delete. You do. Just make sure you do it with your own, you know, discretion, right? You want to make sure that you're, you know what you're doing. If you're the accountant, then you can freeload, do whatever you want. But make sure that if the owner of the business accepts and agrees with you to delete the transaction, then of course it's okay too. You know, it's not the end of the world. Even if you made a minor mistake, it's not the end of the world. You don't need to go and, you know, correct it per se in order for you to delete it, right? And there are some things that you can and cannot delete. Now, if you're deleting a transaction, just be aware that. If that transaction is taken out, it may affect everything that you've done before that. So, for example, remember when we talked about deleting accounts? If the account has been used before, you're wiping out everything that that account has been used for. And then you're going to mess up your QuickBooks for just deleting that one thing. So, basically, this just tells you that... Oftentimes, when you do delete things, you see holes in your transaction or gaps or things just disappear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. It's obvious. You are trying to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Now, the general rule of thumb is you should try not to delete it and you should try to more, in other cases, void the problem instead of delete it. Mm -hmm. Or try to edit it as much as you can. So in this case... We're going to try to edit this um, transaction right here. So first off, we're going to start off by, um, uh, by going to the customers and we're going to create an invoice. Okay, so um, we're going to go click previous. So in this case, I'm just going to go here and go to create invoices on the home page. Just make it easier. And from what this said is to click the previous button. Now, for me, sometimes it didn't work, but today, QuickBooks seems to like me today. <laughs> so here I have a Cruz Maria branch. Um, of, yes, it's past due. But that's because we're working in 2020. These files are 2019. Okay. Um, but let's just make sure that we have the dates correctly. And this is invoice uh, 2019-106. So all of this is correct. Now, the reason why we're going to edit this um, invoice is because, let's say Cruz Maria. She, she calls us the day before and says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to, I need to get three more hours of... What was it that she needed? The pack, so the retouching package, I believe. She wanted, she wanted the um, the outdoor photo session, or she wants additional um, uh, photo sessions. Okay, so here because she called us last minute, you know, you have two or three options. You can just send a second bill. Of course, that's not going to hurt your business. 
And you can just go back and revise her previous order, right? Because if each session is like, what do you call it? If they kind of go along with each other, or let's say this order is specifically for one specific location, instead of billing them twice for the same location, you can at least, you know, revise the one that you have now and just bill her a bigger bill. And that's what we're doing right now. Because she decided to throw in an additional, she wanted an additional um, outdoor photo session. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in there. Outdoor photo session and she wanted three more hours okay so now her bill has been rung up for an additional 285 dollars all right and this because she called last minute and was like i i need i need i need three more hours okay that's fine and this is how you edit it it's simple as that you can edit you can edit any invoice in case you forgot a invoice number, you forgot to put the correct date in, you can edit the invoice as long as you want, as many times as you want, okay? It's not against the rules, but you do wanna be very careful when editing it because if you don't record it at the end of the day um, or record the sales or what has happened, you can also get in trouble that way as well. But in this case, she just called us last minute, like I said, wanted three extra hours of um, a outdoor photo session. We said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, update and edit your invoice. So when you get a new bill, it's going to be for a larger amount. And then we can go ahead, click save and close. And it says, do you sure you want to make changes to this transaction? I say yes. Boom, we got the beep of approval. And that's pretty straightforward because we've been looking at looking at um, a bunch of invoices, right? And there are times where I, you know, accidentally click the enter button. If you're a very, very fond user of Excel, this will happen to you, okay? But if you are a fond user of QuickBooks, you should be um, you should be well aware that your you, your your home key or the key that you type the most in is going to be your tab key. Um, you can change it, but in this case, let's just continue. So with QuickBooks, yes, I've you've seen you seen me do it before, and you see me go back and edit. Those kind of minor mistakes are okay to do. All right. Just nothing too big that will actually affect your transaction too extreme, all right? And it's also to the discretion of the accountant, right? Um, and again, I don't expect you guys to be professional quick bookers at the end of this, you know, unless you certify, of course. Um, then, yes, then you making common mistakes such as pressing the enter button and validating the transaction again, is a common mistake and can easily be fixed, right? Now, in this case, we're looking, um, now that we went over at looking at editing invoices, right? Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now, it's now we're looking at voiding and deleting transactions. Again, not advisable to delete transactions, okay? Unless it meets certain circumstances, right? And in this case, it gives you a list of um, what you can do to void a transaction or to delete a transaction. So um, in this case, uh, to delete a transaction, this is what you need to do. Make sure that you select the transaction that you don't want anymore and that you go edit um, the edit menu and you can go ahead and delete it, right? So again, deleting is easy, right? Voiding, there are a few extra steps when you do need to void. Now, if you do void a transaction, right, um, you do need to, once you've voided it, you need to do, what you have to do is you have to also create an additional two journal entries to basically reverse the transaction and to make sure that the correct amounts are adjusted accordingly, okay? So that's what this whole section just reads if you're voiding a transaction. But it's straightforward. We've seen before um, 
we've seen before how to avoid a check. You know, um, oftentimes what you can do is, let's say you do have a transaction. I'm going to go back to that invoice real quick. All right, so I'm going to go back to that Maria Cruz invoice. Hold on, cancel. All right, here's Cruz Maria, right? I can go ahead and go edit, and I can go ahead and void this transaction right here. Simple, easy. Okay, and once I void it, that means I have to make the necessary adjustments just so then it correctly voids it. And that's all that section just says. All right. Pretty straightforward. There's no real example I can show you that's in the book. But I mean, like I said, you can just go ahead and go to edit, pre edit and void it and just take the necessary um, things that you need. Yeah. Next section here is going to be deleting all transactions. Yes, you can delete all the transactions. Let's say I messed up my book so bad I want to start all over. Yes, you can do that. And the great thing is by you selecting this option that we have in QuickBooks, you get to, co you get to keep three things. You get to keep all of your lists, all of your customers and vendors and whatnot lists, and you get to um, get to keep all of your items list. So essentially, you're just deleting all the transactions, but you're keeping all of the other information, such as your peoples that you've created, right? Mm -hmm. So by doing that, you it's called condense data, right? Here it is in um, italicized to condense data, all right? And how to do that? Is you're gonna go to your uh, let me let me let me clear let me clear this out so then we can all right so we're gonna go to a file and then you're going to go to utilities and boom you wait where is it condense 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 convert oh there it is right there I just took too oh. long down farther down farther okay condense yeah. data right here uh -huh. all right. Now, once you do that, you're going to get this window saying, okay, well, if you're going to condense the data, let QuickBooks properly save them in a spot in case you need to ever reopen it. Now, of course, we have, um, you know, QuickBooks, right? We have a couple options when it comes to QuickBooks, right? We can create a portable file. We can create a backup file. You can create a separate company file for this or a copy of it. Yes, you can. But this is saying, hey, before you delete everything, let QuickBooks make sure that we have your transactions saved somewhere or, or if you hadn't backed up your file before, let's go ahead and do that. And after that, then everything gets wiped out. And the only thing that actually stays is your chart of accounts, your contact list, your items list, and anything that you've built upon in your QuickBooks. The only thing that's gone is all your transactions. So this is very helpful, especially like I said, let's say this is your first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel. So let's say it's your first time building your own company and you messed up so badly that you need to just erase. Instead of creating a new company file and having to enter in all of those people's information all over again, this way, you can just delete all the information and keep all of those lists, okay? So, um, and we'll talk about that when we actually close our books because that's also one of the things that you can do is when you're done with the end of, with, when you're done with the um, accounting period, right? Which is when you complete the whole cycle. Once you reach the end, which is to close your books completely, what you can do is you can lock it up right? And then once you lock it up, you can delete all your transactions and condense the data and start over a brand new period with brand new data in there instead of having things from last year or last few things, okay? But there are a few things that you need to do when you do that, such as making sure that your bank is up to date, 
Now, again, they're going to wipe out all of your transactions. So you're starting from zero. Okay. So that is that. All right. Let's see if we're good on time. Okay, it's only 2.30. See, we're coming up through this pretty quick. Memorizing transaction, okay? So any questions so far? No. Okay. Man memorizing transaction. So again, if you have a common transaction that you're always constantly recording, right? Mm -hmm. QuickBooks can save you some time by memorizing a transaction for you. For example, let's say you have a bill, right? The same reoccurring bill that comes every single month and you know it's going to be for the same amount. For example, rent expense, right? You will know that no matter where you're at, rent is always a flat rate. It's going to be for whatever you are renting it for the amount for. Anything that's a variable will be obviously your utilities, your gas, your electricity, your water bill, your telephone bill. Your internet bill, all of those are going to, depend, going to be depending on how often you use it. And in this case, receiving a rent bill will always, always reoccur at, this, at the same time every month, right? It always comes back to you on the first of the month for the previous month, right? Something like that. Okay, so that's a perfect example of what you can do. You can, instead of having to type it all in, all over again, what um, QuickBooks can do is it can memorize that transaction. So instead of having to fill in all the information, you just type in the name or you can actually search the transaction that you're trying to, that you receive the bill for. And it would fill it out automatically. You just press save and, save and close. So... With that, there are things that it can um, memorize, right? Such as invoices, sales receipts, bills, and other um, transactions. Now, there are also a few things that it cannot memorize, right? For sure, is it cannot memorize um, transactions such as bill payments, right? Because it's true. You can't say that you're going to pay this much amount every single month, right? Realistically, you can pay more this month, you can pay less next month, or you can pay all of it this month, right? That's a variable factor, right? And yes, you yes, you would be it would be tedious for you to have to type in the same number all the time, but in this case, you cannot record a bill payment using the same exact number because QuickBooks would not be able to tell that. You know what I mean? It's not going to be able to recognize a transaction, especially when you're dealing with a bunch of vendors, right? Not every vendor is going to act the same. Okay? Other things is going to be paychecks. Paychecks is also one of those things that you cannot memorize, right? Because especially when you're having wages... Um, workers, right? And if you offer sick time, overtime, vacation pay, if you offer all of those, then you can for surely can recognize that pay you cannot memorize paychecks because everybody's paycheck is going to be different. Same thing, right? Um, even though if you have a salary-based person, they could typically... Um, if you allow them to, they could do overtime that's apart from their salary or if they have commission-based, right? Mm -hmm. Anything, all of those things become factors and it will be too difficult to have QuickBooks say, this person gets this amount every single, every single two weeks, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So especially with um, um, people who have, are on wages, Okay. And then lastly, um, receiving payments, right? You can never predict how much your customers is actually going to pay you, right? They may pay you now. Great. They may pay you later if they owe you, um, especially on an account. Are they obligated to pay you in full? No. 
No, not if you set up some kind of payment plan. So oftentimes, right, um, for example, um, you're at a merchant store, right, and they let you have a credit card. You have a minimum baseline to pay whatever the minimum is, right? And you have the choice to either pay more or pay or don't pay more. You just, just pay the minimum and that's it. Now, QuickBooks is never going to be able to tell that because customers are unpredictable. They could have, you know, they may have some complications along the way. They may have lost their jobs. They may fall on payments. Whatever the reason is, there's no way that QuickBooks can record the same amount and expect to, re to memorize that same transaction over and over again. Okay? So... Let's go ahead and take an example of what a memorized transaction would look like. So we're going to create a bill, okay, with the data down here. So we're going to be uh, recognizing a bill, okay? And it's going to be from Sinclair Insurance. So we're going to be doing insurance expense, okay? And here, uh, I believe that says... Monthly, monthly insurance, um, <laughs> sorry, monthly insurance uh, payment for, what did you say, $600? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's, that's a very expensive insurance. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and enter this bill, okay? Again, um, it's a bill, and we're going to go to Sinclair. Sinclair Insurance. Now, by me typing this in, um, it has a, it fills in everything, right? And we want to make sure that our reference number here is going to be. Uh, what does it say in the book? Oh, I there isn't one. No, I don't okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, again, it's going to be on. Okay, this one says due on the. It's uh, it was billed on the fifteenth. It's okay. On the 15th of January. Okay. So by me fixing that, it became on, uh, um, in 30 days, it is going to be February 14th. All right. Now. Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. No worries. All right. So here we're in the account. 